that was wonderful. And I think this piece I'm going to read is going to fit well with the with the music. <clears throat> My World Cup runneth over. Now, I'm taking a big risk with a sports metaphor. You can ask my husband about it later, but. My World Cup runneth over. My neighbors were having their house restuckoed. A job that was supposed to take eight days. But between the rainy ones and the blistering ones, the work went on and on. The crew of men, like most crews of men who work around my neighborhood in the heat and the rain, spoke Spanish among themselves. They also brought the best lunches, tortillas warmed over little portable burners wrapped around what looked like savory fillings. I collect these images from the window of my home office and on my walks that criss and cross this town. One morning, the crew's radio was playing, loud enough to distract me from my work, and my first impulse was to label it an imposition. But when I tuned into the urgency of the radio narration, punctuated by the collective elations and ejections, I knew it could only be one thing, a sports event. So sitting at my desk, I Googled to find out whether a World Cup game was in progress. There was. Mexico versus Sweden. My thought process. The stucco crew spoke Spanish. The stucco crew was listening to a World Cup game between Mexico and Sweden. The stucco crew inflated and deflated in perfect synchronicity with the radio crowd. Ergo, the stucco crew was Mexican. Not so fast. Perhaps the crew felt more affinity for Mexico than for Sweden. Logical, but that didn't mean they were for Mexico. And then I began to wonder which country they were from, and more pressing for them, what their immigration status was. Okay, so after all that, the loud radio no longer annoyed me. I no longer saw it as a distraction from my work, it had become my work, all of it. The sound of the radio, the odd culture mashup of Mexico versus Sweden, the men in my neighbor's yard, their pleasure in the game, potentially balancing the terror they must at least to some degree feel for themselves and their families in this country. Now to the next day. The heat was supposed to climb to 86 to 93 the following day, and to 97 the next. Through my office window, I could see the legs of one worker as he stood on the small roof outcropping above my neighbor's back porch. I could see that he got there by climbing a tall ladder and then walking across a narrow plank. His pants were caked with wet plaster, and he was working with a thick, heavy brush. I could hear it splat as he dipped it into his bucket, as its slather swooshed against the house. I wondered if he was aware of me, that I was sitting only a few feet from him, and that I was writing about him and his fellow crew members as they worked, as they climbed those tall ladders and stood on narrow wooden planks that sagged under their weight. The radio was playing again, another World Cup game, I looked it up. That day, it was Japan versus Poland, Senegal versus Colombia, Panama versus Tunisia. More improbable combinations, like a book that lets you join a giraffe's head to a frog's body or a baby's head with a CEO's torso. <laughs> At noon, I went out walking. I nodded to the stucco crew. I walk every day, make a long loop around this town, and I see all kinds of things. The subtle changes of the seasons, tourists from all over the world who need directions, young children in long lines behind their teachers, students around the high school, all more beautiful than they can imagine. 
litter, not so beautiful, which I pick up and sort into trash and recycling. When I walk through this town, I am sometimes so deep into thinking about the things I think about that I lose track of where I am. I could be walking across a desert. I could be walking from Mexico to Sweden. I could be a laborer finding his footing on a narrow plank while a writer across the way watches. Along my walking route lies a dense patch of prairie on the grounds of the Cheney Mansion. In the fall, the gardener chops its tall leafy stalks down to stubble. And in the spring, small green shoots make a go of it once again. As that prairie patch thickens up to summer, it rises to my knees, my waist, my shoulders, and beyond. And no matter how lost I am in my way across Senegal or Poland, a country my grandparents fled for their lives, or Tunisia or Japan, or high in the air on a wooden plank, when I approach that corner, a sensory miracle occurs. When conditions are right, the dense tangle of deep-rooted prairie plants emits a glorious fragrance cloud. And the more lost I am in myself, the more wonderful the surprise when I enter that cloud. Like a little marker on a map saying, you are here. The men are still balanced on the narrow planks. The world is still cruel, but here is the scent of the prairie. Like the purest native we have for miles around. And here I am. Here we are. Here we are. <laughs>